In 4.3, we talk about something called the addition rule. Which is great, right? Because you're like, I know how to add. I'm in this class. This is going to be easy. And it's really not that bad. It should make sense to us as probability stuff. So let's do 4.3. Before we get started in anything else, I need to tell you what something is, is, is called. When you have two or more simple events that you want to occur, what that's called is a compound event. compound event is when you're looking to find the probability of two or more simple events. this to you in the form of an example. Have you guys ever been to Vegas? How many people have never been to Vegas? What's wrong with you? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so Vegas is this place that's in Nevada. Okay? And they do this crazy thing they're called gambling. Have you ever heard of gambling before? I'm patronizing you now. Very condescending, I understand. Uh, but they, they gamble in Vegas a lot. And there's this game called Craps. They don't play it in California, but they, they play it over there, and it has dice. Have you guys ever seen or heard of the game called Craps? Okay. Not, not crap, but Craps. There's, there's a game. Uh, you might, never mind. Um, <laughs> enough of that. We already talked about the bird poop thing in here, so I think we're, we're off, the, off the topic. Anyway, so there's this game called Craps, and how it's played is you roll two dice at the same time. Now let's, pre and, and how you win at craps initially is you either roll a 7 or you roll an 11. And those two, two numbers will double your money, basically, if you put it on what's called the pass line. If you don't roll a 7 or 11, uh, you can roll a, a 2 or a 12 or a 3 or any, any of those combinations of numbers. Uh, besides the 2 or the 12, the special cases there, uh, you, you get a, a point and you have to roll that number before you roll a 7 again. If you roll a seven, then you lose. So let's just keep it, keep it simple here and say, if you are playing craps for the first time, if you roll a seven or an 11, you win. Are you understanding? So you put $5 down, you roll a seven, uh, I give you five more bucks. You roll 11, I give you five more bucks. You roll an eight, I take your five dollars, basically. That's, basically, that's the way it works. There's more to it, but do you guys understand the concept of the craps game? So let's say that instead of rolling two die at a time, you have the choice to roll one die, and then roll the other die. So let's say we roll the die, the first die, and you get a six. You get a six. What two choices do you have to win still on your second die? How many ways could you win? Okay, I just said two. I kind of gave that away, didn't I? What numbers would you have to get in order to still win? So your first die you have here, There's a six. And you want to try to make seven or 11. What do you have to add to this to get that one? So your second die has to be a one. That would give you the seven. You'd get $5, right? Or you could roll away. And that would give you the 11. Any other choices, you wouldn't be making money. You understand? This one's set in stone right now. So we'd have these two. So what the addition rule comes down to is, and what the compound events kind of let us do, there's more than one way to win this. So what you want to know is, what's the probability that if I roll this second die, I'm going to win? 
basically, you're not looking at just one outcome, you're looking now at two simple events that could cause you to win. Are you understanding the difference? Before it was one simple event we were looking at, just rolling a five or rolling a two. Now we're saying, what if, what if that's not all that we, we could have? What if rolling a one or a five would both get us paid? I don't care which one, do I? I don't care if it's a one or a four or five, I'm, I'm getting five bucks either way. So this comes up with an or probability. This is where the addition rule starts, is the idea of or. Either one of these will satisfy our need. So a compound event says, what if we had the probability of rolling a three or a five? That's the idea. I'm sorry, one or a five, I said three. One or a five. By the way, one thing. In our case, when we say the word or, or in this case means, now these are, these are mutually exclusive. You can't roll both a three and a five at the same time. But there are going to be some cases where you do not have the mutually mutually exclusive component to this, and you can still be or. Okay, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but or means in the context of, of mathematics, either this one or this one or both. Okay, that's what or means for us. Either you have one or the other, or both would satisfy that condition. Now, here you cannot roll both a one and a five with the same die, but we will talk about certain cases later. So or means one or the other or both. How we write out the probability is, let's say we have two, two events like the one and the five. We would just say probability of event A or B. Whenever you see that word or, what that signifies to you is the addition rule. So what this means is probability of A or B. This is kind of a big one, okay? You have to get this down. The probability of A or B means in a single trial, a single trial, you don't do it twice, you do it one time, in a single trial, this is the probability of A occurring, or B occurring, or they both occur. Are you understanding that? You don't do it twice, you do it one time. This is a single trial. Not if you're understanding that. This is one, one roll of die. This one's already done. You don't consider this one anymore, okay? You're just looking at one roll of die. What's the probability of this, or this, or both? That's what we mean by or. Yes, no? Okay, so probability of A or B means the probability of in a single trial, Probability of A occurring, or B occurring, or both A and B occurring, but the key part is the, the last part here, in a single trial. Make sure you have that down. I just told you that for, for this one, it really doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense that it's both A and B occurring, right? Because you, you can't have both a, a 1 and a 5 occurring at the same time. But what if I ask this question? I want to talk about the probability of being blonde or female, right? You find the probability that you can be blonde, can't you? 
and, and you can be female, can't you? Half of you are going yes, obviously, and female. Uh, but can, <laughs> can you be both blonde and female? Yes. 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 Kind of. Highlights, right? Kind of. You see anything? Okay. So, so the answer is yeah, we don't have this particular case. You can't be both a one and a five at the same time, but you can be both like blonde and female. Those things are not mutually exclusive. And you still talk about the probability of being or, uh, either blonde or female. And there's, a, there's an overlap there. So in this case, this or both thing really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if I said find the probability of being blonde or female, Well, then we really don't have that mutually exclusive context here. Before we go any further, I'd like to give you um, a very good example to illustrate this. Because I don't want to give you the addition rule and it just it's a rule for you. Uh, we're going to have something called the addition rule in just a second. Because that's the title of our section. Uh, but I'd like to kind of develop this with you. So, what I'm going to do is make up kind of a condition table for you. You ever been to court? There's these things called courts, and in them, there you get. <laughs> just kidding. You ever been to court? Actually, like you know, well, you know what court is, right? You go to the court if you do something bad or supposedly do something bad. Generally, we're talking about like criminal court now. So, and you stand up before the the judge guy, and he either condemns you or he sets you free, basically. So, there's two options in court: either you're found guilty, or you're found innocent. Actually, you're found not guilty, but for this exercise, we'll do this. Isn't that kind of pessimistic also? You're not found innocent, are you? You're just found not guilty. We just don't have enough to condemn you. Ha, 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 ha. You might have done it still. Okay, O.J. Simpson, you know, like that type of deal. So now there's also some things that could happen. If you're found guilty, if you're found guilty, you might have done it, but is there ever cases where people are found guilty where they didn't do it? Yeah, they always come back like 30 years later saying, Oh, by the way, we found some DNA. You actually didn't do it. Sorry. There goes 30 years of your life, which kind of sucks. Um, so, you could be found guilty, but you didn't actually do it. Or you're found guilty and, yeah, yeah, you did it. <laughs> But the same thing could happen with innocent, right? Couldn't you not, if you don't do something and you're found innocent, that's the way it's supposed to work, right? If you, if you actually did it and you're found innocent, you're like, whew, awesome. You beat the system, right? You feel good. Well, you probably still feel guilty, I hope, but you beat the system. So this can actually happen. So let's say that, I'm going to throw some numbers up here. <clears throat> So these are some, I'm just making this up as I go, but let's say that this is, out of a certain court, this is what has actually happened here. 